Uh, so welcome to learning partner in this video we are going to complete an advanced version of a movie booking app right so just like the book my show we are going to allow user to select the particular seat number so this i have already googled and uh, done it so i will share the html code also right so you can have an access to html so same application whatever this is uh, this is created with javascript but same thing we are going to try in angular right with uh, almost this is static uh, like seat number and everything is static but we are going to do everything dynamic like we will create array of movies seat numbers and everything we will make it dynamic and the this seat selection like how do we make this selection you can see once i click that movie is get that particular seat number is getting selected cost is also getting increased number of seats also we know so what are these myth I mean, we can divide this, uh, divide this small application into smaller tasks, like first creating array, then dynamically creating this UI and everything, right? So we will try this. Let's start with the Angular project. Let me just close all. Now. So this is an array which I have used in the previous video also. Simply a array of object is there where we have movie data, right? So you can see movie name is there, ticket rate is there, banner image. This image we are going to use. Once we select the image, once we select the movie, that movie banner, we will show it over here in this white screen, right? For that, this banner image is there. Then description, then shows, like what number of shows we have. But shows in this video, we are not going to focus on the shows, but more focus will be on the seat rows, right? When we book any ticket from the book my show or when we, uh, when we see any movie theater, so we have number of rows and in that number of rows, we have particular number of seats, right? Starting from one, two, three up to whatever the seats we have in that particular row. So in seat rows, we have an array of object. Let's say in uh, for this particular movie, in movie row A, we have number of eight seats, eight. But just row H, the let's say H might be the last row. So where we have two extra seats. Right. So this kind of uh, data is going to be there. So same objects, uh, same array of object is there just with the different data. Right. You can see. Now, first task, I have just copy pasted the HTML, which I have shown you over here. This is static HTML. Uh, component I have already created movie seat booking routing is also there, but we are not going to focus on that. So on localhost 4200, this is running. So this is, you can see existing uh, static HTML is there, right? Now, first thing, what we are, uh, I will just mention like what are the major tasks we are going to achieve here. First thing, we have a movie array. So that movie array, we need to bind to this dropdown. So bind movie list to dropdown. So this is the first task we will do. So now over here, in this movie list, we are going to, we have the movie list, movie array. So this we have to bind to this static dropdown. Let's remove this OPT. Now we need to add a for loop over here. So star ng for let movie of our array name, that is movie list. Then we need to bind value also. So value in the property binding. And since movie list is an array of objects. So in movie, we will get object. So movie, movie dot movie name. In the value also, we are binding movie name because we don't have any unique ID over here. So we will consider movie name as a unique thing. Then while showing, again, we are going to show the movie name only. So the same thing will go over here also. So first task is done. Let's just save and check. So our movie should be dynamic. Okay, so you can see movies are dynamic now. So first task is done. Second task is in the movie object, you can see we have banner image also. So if we select any particular movie, right? So that movie banner should be visible over here. Currently, this is static. But if I select dangle, so dangle banner should be uh, visible over here. So now we need to write change event on this drop down. So means we need to get the selected movie, right? So for that, we need to create one variable, right? So let's say this is the variable, a string variable we have to create or any, the whole object we can store. So instead of this, okay. 
So I have created a variable that is selected movie. Now, once we change the movie, we need to call a function. So event will, since it is a drop down, we need a change event, right? So on movie change round bracket. This function we have to create. Sorry, sorry. Uh, we have created a variable, right? So let it let it make string only because we need to bind this using ng model. So string variable only I have created. We need to bind this to this very uh, drop down using ng model so that we can know the current value of the drop down. Ng model equal to this. Okay. Now on movie change. One more variable we are going to create where we will store the selected movie object means whole object this. So for that selected movie OBJ that will be object. So I'm keeping it as any. Now once we change the movie this uh, function we are going to call. So function round bracket curly bracket. Now we know in selected movie we have bind uh, in the draw option we have bind movie name so in this variable whenever we change the movie only movie name is going to be stored in the ng model right means we will get the movie name let me just print this so that we will understand so here i'm printing movie name so let's just save and check so if i select dangal you can see here that variable is having dangal value whatever the movie i select that movie name is going to be stored in this particular variable right now on click of change movie we need to get the particular movie object so now we need to find the data from this array so const movie data is equal to this dot movie list now we need to find the particular movie from this array of object so method will be fine because we are going to get only one object right we use fine when we know like whatever the queries whatever the conditions we are going to pass we should get only one value right because fine will only return only one value so that's we are using fine now we have to compare with movie name so movie name equal to equal to this dot selected movie in this variable we are going to know like which drop down we have selected and whatever the data we get now just to make a habit whenever you write if uh, find now always you should add a undefined check not equal to undefined because if you don't find any record uh, by this query you will get undefined over here so if you are trying to write any code with this variable so you should always make sure like if you have checked, you have checked for the null and the undefined. So undefined check we have added. Now, if it is not undefined, then this object that is selected movie object, we are going to assign the movie with, with movie data, which we have got over here like this. So now let's add a debugger and let's test this once. Right. So if if I select the movie Dangal, you can see drop down uh, function got triggered. Now in the selected movie, we have Dangal. Now from this array, we are going to, we are trying to find the particular movie object with matching Dangal, right? So in movie data, you can see we have got one particular movie data that is of Dangal. You can see single object we have got. And that object is currently in movie data. We have the object. So it is not undefined. So it is going to the if condition and the data we have got, we are storing in this particular variable. So in this variable, we know what movie currently selected. So now inside this uh, selected movie object, we have binary image. So this only we have to bind it over here. So selected movie object in the HTML, this, this is the image inside that screen. We need to make it uh, dynamic. So using property binding. Instead of this static thing, selected movie object dot, we have to use banner image, movie banner image. This property we have to use, right? So let's just save and check if we are able to see the dynamic banner. 
right so currently no movie is selected so we don't uh, we are not able to see anything so if i select something is breaking let's check might be a null check so you can see the error cannot read properties of undefined reading movie banner image so whatever we have from where we are trying to movie movie uh, banner image that is undefined means we are trying to read the movie banner image from selected movie but if you see on the page load, we don't have anything over here. This is nothing but undefined. We have just created the variable. So by default, when we create a variable, right? If we don't initialize it, it is undefined. So we cannot read anything from undefined. So that is the error. So that in this case, we need to add a null check over here with question mark. That's it. So let's save and check now. Now we should not see that error. Okay. Now we don't have error. Now if I select the movie Trisham 2, right? In the movie data, we are going to get, so see image is visible over here whatever the movie i select that image is visible in that screen so first second task is done second task was based on movie selection in screen show movie image Okay, second task we have done. So uh, dynamic uh, movies are also done. Dynamic image is also done. Next task is whatever the movie we have selected, we have stored that into one variable, right? Now these seats and the number of rows should be dynamic. This is currently static. So let me just show you the static response. So this is a row and inside that this is a seat. So row means this row and inside that how number of currently we have eight. Let's try to add one more. So now you, you can see one more added over here. See, got it? So seat, this div is responsible to show that seat and this div is responsible to add a number of rows, right? Now, now we have to use the for loop. So if you can see in the object, in particular movie object, we are getting an array of object that is seat rows. And inside that we have rows A and number of seat as eight. A number, how many number of rows we know, right? So this number of rows, whatever the number of rows we have, what number, what number of records we have in this particular array, that number of rows should be there, right? So first I will use star uh, for loop on this star ng for rows should be dynamic, right? So let rows of select i mean selected object that is selected movie object whatever the movie we have selected we have stored that into this variable dot this property set rows right now let's comment the remaining rows so that the static thing we were, we are going to come comment let's save and check Currently, we, we have not selected any movie, so that's why it is looking like this. Let's, okay, again, it we have forgot the null check, question mark. Okay, now if I select the movie three here, so you can see A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, H, up till H. Let's try to just minimize. A, B, C, D. Okay, so in rocketry, we just have four rows. Uh, in 3 years, let's just have something more. Let's try with this two movie. In rocketry, we just have four rows. And in 3 years, we have some number of rows. Okay, so rocketry, you can see only four rows are printed. And in 3 years, you can see number of rows got entries, right? Now rows are dynamic. Now in that rows, we have to make the seats also, seats also dynamic, right? Now, if you see in, um, uh, what do we say in rows, this is an object, right? So you, this is an object. So in row, we got the row name that is row A. Number of seats, eight is there. Now in the number of seats, we have eight, but we have to use the for loop on eight. How we are going to do that? 
right so now here we have number 8 but in angular for for loop because this seats could uh, this seats we have to make it dynamic but we cannot uh, use the for loop on the integer we need array to use the for loop right so i am going to create one function which is going to give me the array of integers right so get seat number array this is the function i will create for this function i will have, have the parameter total seats okay and here i will use the normal for loop before that i will just create an empty array let seat array this is going to be empty array now for loop i will use up till this and it will start from one with equal to and whatever the element let's say i got five over here as a parameter so for loop will run up till five right and whatever the number i get index that i will push to this array local array index i will push it over here so that if for loop run for five five in, uh, iterations then i will have zero one two three four five elements in this array and i will simply return this array okay so this function is responsible to create an array of number let's say i said five i said i pass five to this function so i will get zero one two three four five in my array right now this function i have to call from the html on this particular div so on this seed div we have to use again for loop because this seed should be multiple right so star ng for let seed of our function i'm i'm not sure like if you know like we can call function also over here but just like the variable we can pass function also to the array uh, to the ng4 but this is a function right so you can see this function has one argument so that we need to pass that or uh, parameter will be rows dot selected movie rows is an array of object right you can see it is an array of object so we have to pass number of seats over here right now this static thing i will remove okay let's add a debugger over here so that i will explain the code let's save and check so this is just a tricky part but i will try to explain so let's say i select rocketary movie movie name change first function continue right so now you can see ui is not plotted yet but this function got called and total seat we have got eight this eight comes from this okay let's change it so that we can eight four five so we have different number of row or different number of seats in each row then we can understand properly let me just rocketary okay movie name change so first total number of seat we have got eight okay so now you can see for loop will run up till eight times let's add a debugger at line number 125 now array we have created right so zero to eight uh, one to eight elements we have got in the array and that we are written so you can see over here one two three four five six seven eight seats are created second row in second row we had four seats so now you can see we have got four now we will get four array like that all the rows are getting plotted see eight four five and again the remaining what was ten so in each rows we have created dynamic seats also understood so this was just a tricky part over here so after plotting seats dynamically now we have to make now we have to make the selection also on click of this part okay before that uh, we can print the seat number also over here so let's just print that inside this div we can print this seat number this is array of integer only so directly seat we can print so let's see yeah so you can see we are going we are getting the properly seat number and rows also like this was a b c d that also we can print that will go over here 
let's try rows rows is an array of object rows dot row let's see yeah okay so you can see row number is also got printed over here and the seats also let's just add some spacing or let's wrap this inside a span plus margin right row. My span is not okay so flex and everything is there so let's just keep that again we have to invest time in designing but let's let it be like this okay so whatever the movie we have selected that number of rows and that number of seat everything is dynamic now now inside this if i click on this particular number this should be selected right and we have to add a particular class so that it will look like it is book means this uh, white occupied or selected i think this color right so if i click on five number this should be selected and this class means uh, this box should have this uh, this kind of background color right so for this i am creating one more variable that will be booked seat number booked booked seat number list this is going to be array of object why array, array of object because you can see in every rows we have one two three one two three one two three so i should know now in from which row i have clicked on uh, if i clicked on this three number from which row right because everywhere we have three so that's why i'm going to store array of object means row and the seat number that's why this book seat number variable i have created as an array of object right now on click of this particular seat number we have to call the function so click let's name it as book seat now to this function we need to pass two parameter first is row that means row dot rows what row is it then second object will be actual seat okay so this function we are going to create where we are going to pass two parameter first is the which row and the seat row is from this parent for loop and seat is from this element for loop okay so let's create this function same kind of logic will be there in the book my show also but it will it is a bigger application so everything will be properly uh what we say you know different to clients and different to theaters it is proper code but the basic concept or basic logic will be the same the technology can be anything but the basic is will be same so now first parameter we are going to get is row name and second second parameter is going to be seat number right so we have created this now we need to push the data into this variable so we can create object over here constant seat obj is equal to the data will be row name row name we have to pass it over here then seat number we have to pass seat number over here so we have created object then this object we have to push over here Some more scenarios are there, but let me just explain the basic. And we need to push object into this array. Let's just test this. Dangle. Continue. Right. If I click on four. We want to remove the debugger. Okay. Oh, now first let me remove the debugger from here. Otherwise, it will get continued call. Let's enable. If I select Dangal. Okay. Now from Dangal movie, I'm going to select fifth seat number from row A. Fifth. So now you can see row name we have got A and the seat number we have clicked is for you. 
So wherever we have clicked, proper data we have sent to this function. Now we are we have created object, and this object we are pushing to our booked seat number array. Right? Now we have got. But now let's say uh, first thing is done, right? But if I try to again click on the same thing, again same record we have got, right? But now it is going to be duplicate in this array. In this array we already have row number A with seat number five. But if I don't add the restriction to check for uh, if seat number and the row is already there, I will be entering multi duplicate data over here. See, duplicate data is over there. So to prevent this, we need to add a check. First, we need to check like in this array for particular row number, particular seat is already there or not. So before adding, we can check const is data exist this dot booking set list dot find m m dot right so here row name equal to equal to row name and seat number also seat number m dot seat number equal to equal to the parameter which we get seat number so here we are checking like in this array if we already have uh, data for this particular row number and for particular seat number because and and is there right so if it is already there we will get the data so we just have to add it if it is undefined if data exist is undefined because if for particular row particular row uh, seat number is not there then only we are going to push so that is just a check for a duplicate row so this will go over here Let's check now. Whenever you are pushing something into an arena, this check always should be there. Let's click on three idiots. Now I'm clicking on number five from B row. Okay. So now you can check. Currently in uh, our array, we don't have any records. Obviously it will, it will come undefined. Okay. Check was wrong. So first we have to add a check with equal to equal to. If it is equal to undefined, then only we have to add. So wrong check we have added. Let's reload one more time. Dangal. Let's uh, from B row. I'm trying to book set number five. So currently we don't have any records. So obviously undefined came. So it will go inside and it will push the record. Again, if I try to click on B. So see now. Now we have got the object over here, right? So now it is not undefined. So it won't go inside so that duplicate data won't be inserted into booking list array, right? So this restriction we have done. Now, if I have clicked over B5, the, it should look booked, right? So this uh, kind of background color we have to add. So class is already there. This is the class that is occupied. Occupied or booked, no? Let me just check. Yeah, occupied only. So this class we have to add on the seat. Right. So here we have to use ng class equal to this class we have to add. Right. Again, we have to create one function because in the booking array, in this book seat number list, we have we know the book seat number user has selected. Right. So we need to filter particular data like if this particular row and per from particular row and particular seat number is exist in this array or not based on that we will just add a dynamic class so let's create one more function check if seat is booked okay so this function i am creating for this function also i will have two parameter row and seat number this query i will use it again so from booking array i will try to find room num row name and seat number if it is if it is uh, what do we say if it is undefined means we don't have any booking for this particular row with this particular seat number then we can return true or uh, the function name is if seat is booked if it is booked then only we can return true so Undefined means we don't have any booking. So we can return false. And in else, we can return true. Okay. Now see, 
what this function is doing we are passing row name and the seat number to this function so it is simply checking in the booking list if we have the booking for this particular row number row name and the particular seat if it is there right if it is not equal to undefined we are simply returning false and if booking is there we are returning true so this function we can use over ng class so function we have to pass and we have to pass the row and the seat same function which we have passed earlier if this 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 function is returning true and false if this is true then we have to add this class that is occupied else we can make it empty okay so this class will get add if this got true right from this function if we have got true over here so let's just save and check hey idiots let's click on pocket array let's click on b from row b and the seat number four so now let's add Currently, we have pushed the data. Let's add a debugger in this function also. Let's continue. Now, as you can see, we are it, it has automatically called because this function has called on ng class. So now row, we have got a and seat number for every seat and for every row, it will call this. But we have to, let's currently a row is starting. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Now b row will start. Uh, now in booking object you can see row number b and seat number four currently seat number is starting one so it is always is going to be undefined so it is returning false right now wait b seat number two seat number three now comes seat number three seat number four right so now it will go to the else block see and it has written true so you can see it is looking like booked but we are able to this class needs to be added occupied means this white class let me just change a little bit what's the class for this selected let's add selected class so that seat number will be properly visible right so wherever user select that seat we have particularly book right you can see so this is the first uh, this is the third task we have accomplished on click of particular book we have booked that particular seat for that particular user right right but now if you see in the right example in our booking book my show also if we select any uh, particular seat and if you want to unselect also we have changed our mind like i don't need this seat so if i clicked again on the selected seat that gets unselected right so same logic we have to write so uh, currently you can see four five six are booked let's say i still again clicked on the uh, seat number five it should be unselected means we have to remove the data from our array right so book seat array so now this function is already there right book seat same function we have to use book seat so this line in this uh, in this code we are checking like for particular row and particular seat number booking is there or not so this only line will go at the top okay this seat object seat object is needed inside over here so we can wrap this code inside this if condition right so this was the existing code we, here we are checking if in booking list we have the particular seat number booked or not right if it is undefined means we don't have it booked right but if it is not undefined then else block will be there and in else block we just have to remove that particular data okay now to remove the particular data from the array we are going to need the index of that row index of that object right so let me just copy the same and paste it over here and instead of find it will be find index so find index will give us particular uh, index from that array okay row index to delete okay now from this array we are just going to remove the particular element so splice 
from bracket for splice, we have to send the index and how many rows? Only one rows. So see, the existing code only we have modified. First, if block will execute, if we don't have the booking, it will insert. But if we already have the booking, so it will go to the else block. And from this booking list, we are going to remove the particular element from the array. So let's just save and test now. Let's select rocketry. Let's say I selected row number seven, eight, six from A. If I select seven again, so you can see it is getting unselected. Right? See, I'm able to unselect. So this was the second scenario which I wanted to explain, right? On click of it, we are going to get. Now these things like what number of, uh, you have selected nine number because we have an array. So array dot length we can show and the price calculation again, that is the uh, in previous video what I have shown, right? So uh, the data current movie selected, you already know, uh, like number of seats already know. So you can multiply and show the total price, right? But just main part of that video was based on the movie selection, rows can be um, dynamic. In that particular row, particular seats can be dynamic, right? And the selection and the unselection. This was the main focus or main the purpose of this video was there, right? So hope it was uh, clearly understood like how things we have done. So with this uh, four function, we have, we have successfully completed the booking seat scenario. Okay, so that's it with this current video.